sometimes taking reality to reality means reality. Yes, I'm here in the real world. And that's because I had to catch the very busy Mr. Andrew Sharp. He is the chief legal advisor for Esteem Estate Management Limited. And that's because it is so important that we talk about the legal parts of investing in real estate. Thank you so much for taking the time to come here and discuss very important the legal aspects of the journey towards home business property ownership not a problem at all you enter the picture normally at, at what stage of somebody's property purchasing experience as you indicated i am the chief legal advisor for esteem um as it pertains to my role specific role mm -hmm. it I, I touch on every aspect, every intricate aspect of the company. So from issues as it pertains to employment issues, as it pertains to um, issues as it pertains to the company, my role with the esteem, it, it, it delves a bit more into managing all of, I would say, the legal aspects of the company. Okay. So it's not, you know, it, it, it's not to say it's, it's something that's, that's specific to a, a particular avenue. The holistic mm -hmm. legal, um, I would say, management of the company, those are the things that I would um, actually have a hand in. Oh, I didn't realize that. I know that means you've got a lot on your plate, and they must also bring quite a few clients who are purchasing property yes. and need those legal needs taken care of. So tell me a bit about that. There's, there's, there's a lot of people who know absolutely nothing about what, why do you need a lawyer when you're buying? I don't need a lawyer to buy lunch. Mm -hmm. Why do I need a lawyer to buy a property? So one of, one of the hallmarks of uh, especially purchase, persons purchasing properties yeah. is that need for what we, what we call independent legal advice. Okay. So at all times, individuals need to feel that they have an attorney or somebody seeking their their own legal interests and their personal interests. So as it pertains to the purchasing of, uh, of let's say let's say property, mm -hmm. um, the documents which may be involved as it pertains to um, purchasing a property, an individual needs to be able to sit with their own attorney, speak to that attorney, and get legal advice relative to you know. What, what, what does this clause mean? How does it, does it affect me? How does this impact me? So as it pertains to esteem, um, estate management, mm -hmm. um, my, my role, although again, I am the, the legal advisor, I'm dealing with the company. Mm -hmm. What we really implore persons to do yeah. is to, you know, seek an independent legal um, advisor an independent lawyer mm -hmm. separate and apart from the company of course okay. because again there needs to be that clear separation as it pertains to the advice that they um, need to obtain in order for them to feel safe and secure when interacting and engaging with the company so many people have this almost anger towards the law profession yeah. that they're being taken advantage of by lawyers but can you describe what are some of the risks of not having a good independent counsel that you're describing. I mean, can people really get taken advantage of if they don't have a, a good lawyer? Certainly, certainly. And um, sadly, I mean, there, there are some things as it pertains to the reviewing of, of certain documents. You know, an ordinary person may be able to, you know, very well read the documents. However, there may be some legal intricacy, some legal terms. We say we say legal jargon, yeah. which may be confusing to some persons. And uh, once you sign on that uh, on that dotted line, yeah. you you are effectively bound mm -hmm. whether or not you have had independent legal advice or not. Right. So I mean, it's yes, it may be as you would say, it it, it may be of some cost to you. However, if it is, you take those precautions now. Mm -hmm you would end up saving in the long run, especially in, in instances where you get into some trouble and sadly, the same lawyers that you would have been trying not to have to pay, now you have to end up paying in the, in the future as it pertains to some sort of legal action to recover damages or to protect yourself in the future. So ideally, I would always employ individuals, anybody purchasing a new home, property, seek some sort of independent legal advice from an, an, an attorney 
even if it's to go through your documents, mm-hmm. go through your sale agreement, go through the deeds that you may have to sign. There's a there's different kinds of deeds, right? There are, yes. Can you quickly what what are we talking about? So again, so I spoke about the sale agreement, mm-hmm. but when it comes to purchase, persons purchasing property, yep. there's what we call a deed of conveyance. Okay. So that's for the purchasing of property. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, the deed of gift, where when it comes to persons who are not necessarily purchasing or selling property, yeah. but let's say you, you, you have a family member mm-hmm. and you want to give or gift property to Ooh, them this is why i've never heard of this term because <laughs> this has never happened to me okay so so that specific type of deed mm-hmm. is a deed of gift okay. so no no consideration no money is passing however the law allows you to gift or give that property to um anybody you you actually choose to choose to do so so there are different types of legal documents. i've heard of a deed of mortgage yes that's a whole different one certainly so in instances where persons are, let's say, engaging a financial institution. A lot of people. A bank, a credit union, in order to actually facilitate the purchase of um, property. Mm-hmm. What happens in those instances is they would end up having to sign what we call a deed of mortgage with that respective institution. Mm-hmm. And that institution effectively now has a contract or an agreement with the person who is purchasing the property. Mm-hmm. And again, there are different legal rights which fall and which form part of that deed of mortgage. So again, an attorney, your own independent legal um, advisor should sit with you, go through the ramifications of that deed of mortgage itself because it binds you. And, and again, because mortgages are for long time periods, yes. you need to know beforehand, you know, exactly what am what, I getting into and what are you tying yourself to yeah. in the long term. So, it is sounding to me like any realtor should make sure that their client understands the need for proper legal representation, review of documents, and presence of a proper lawyer throughout the journey. Certainly, certainly, and that is and that is key. And it should also be um, it shouldn't be overlooked. The fact that they should always ensure that it's independent. Okay. It's an independent advisor, separate and apart from the company, who is giving them that independent legal advice so that nothing ever comes back to the company or, or to that real estate company, which, mm-hmm. which per, where persons feel as if it is they're being taken advantage of by the realtor. This is so interesting because in speaking to some of the other associates with the, the company, we've had people who work with them all the time and yeah. are their recommended vendors. But you're describing an opposite situation. You're saying that when esteem estate management is involved, they are going to make sure that their clients are seeking proper independent representation as well because they're really seeking their best interest. Correct, correct, correct. It's quite fascinating, actually. Now, when it comes to legal fees, are they always tied to the value of the property or are some per hour fees, that kind of thing? So... And that's, a, and that's a very good question. Um, and what, what persons don't realize is that, yes, attorneys really should not be giving um, persons random random figures of, of the top of their head because our our legal fees, any, any attorney's legal fees are based on an actual um, scale. So again, yes, the, the value the value of the property mm-hmm. um, as it pertains to deeds. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what we use as, as our benchmark. But so, even, so those fees will be tied to the value of the property? Correct, okay. correct yes. Okay. Um, but even more than that, documents where persons may, be, may have to sign yeah. and attorneys actually have to draft the document. Yeah. Um, it's based on the attorneys, uh, how much years the attorney has been called to the bar, how much years they've been in practice really? and their hourly rates. So it's so it's not to say it's it's an it's something that we pull out of the air. It should not be. Right. It's actually something which can be calculated, worked out, so the clients know upfront at least what what are the fees. So if somebody goes shopping for a lawyer and finds a man who real cheap, be suspicious. Be concerned. Yes. Be <laughs> That's a very very good word to use. Well, is there anything else that you think? people need to know for example 
if you kind of sort of putting on the hat of the person who might be representing the client and not your senior state. Right. right? Yeah. If you were in that position and, and you've got people coming to you who are in their journey of investment in real estate, can you give some tips, an attitude that they should have or not have when approaching the, the lawyer? What I think is important for persons, especially new purchasers, yeah. ask as many questions as possible. And, and, I, and even as an attorney in my own practice, I realize that, that persons, when they come and they ask for advice, they, they, may, they may box themselves into, you know, four corners okay. and they don't ask as much questions as they, as they need to. Because okay. even if it is, we start from the process of, let's say, signing that sale agreement. Mm -hmm. Because the sale agreement is that, is that document which, which binds the, the transaction it's of... It's the start of it it's, it's the start of no it. No going back now. Correct. And, 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 and you're correct. There's no going back. So you need to inquire from the attorney at that at the inception you know what does the sale agreement mean what 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 is the deposit where where is my deposit going to go who is who is holding my deposit do i get my deposit back so these are questions which um, i would invite uh, um, any new prospective purchaser to ask uh, and any attorney again any attorney with their so proper attorneys wouldn't um, be adverse to giving that advice, indicating, answering all of your questions because again, we have a duty because our duty is to give you independent legal advice for your benefit. Got it, got it. Well, I have a million different questions. I never even got to ask, what is escrow? But I know that you have to be on your way. Folks, it has been wonderful giving you all of this information on taking realty to reality. Thank you once again for being here. Thank you for watching. I'm Sophie White, signing out for now.